of Iowa. We'll see highlights. Also, we'll stop by and visit the Michigan Experience. And it's Michigan State Week, so buckle it up and get ready. We'll scout the Spartans. All that and more coming up next. Michigan Replay and Jim Brandstatter is brought to you by a, a great result after a very difficult week following Colorado. I don't even like to bring it up because everybody's been bringing that game up to your team all week long, and they had to survive that along with Iowa and Iowa City. Right, and a lot of people ask me, Jim, you know, do you think the Colorado game had a big impact on this one and a slow start? No, I don't think so. I think Iowa came out ready to play. It's tough to play in Iowa City, and then kids will come back if they just get after it. Yeah, but your kids, I think, still were being reminded of that by everybody. They wanted to forget it, but everybody reminded them, and maybe that was still part of their psyche as they headed into the game, and they had to gain some confidence. This game might have been the trick to do it. Right, that can sometimes happen, but we talked before the game that that wasn't going to be a factor, and we talked all week long. We had to put that one behind us. But as you say, it's very hard, and even when you go talk to Hayden Fry before the game, that's the thing that's brought up, so people just won't forget it. Their first series, great play by Steve Morrison here to get you going in the early go. Great interception. Now he's showing some of his fullback abilities <laughs> as he runs down the sideline. I bet you'll talk to him about that on Monday, won't you? <laughs> nah, he did a good, great job there. Tyrone Wheatley gets the ball here in your possession. This probably disappointed you. You got the ball deep in their territory. You got some yardage, but couldn't stick it in the end zone. Right. We got nothing on our first uh, play, Jim. And then right before the field goal here, we just threw off the fingertips of Mercury Hayes. We should have converted. But Remy came through, and at least you get some points. So all the momentum doesn't swing their way. Three to nothing at this point. And then Iowa starts to move the ball. And early going, they were moving the ball on the ground, which I know is a concern to you. Right. Uh, Shaw broke out there on a off tackle draw type of play then we got a face mask which great give them great field position and then driscoll goes back inconsistent but there were some passes in there that he hit yes i i thought he did a good job jim think about this kid you can't sack him he hasn't been sacked in four games and he's played some good competition third and 15 here and this is the big play you didn't like Right, I, I don't think we played that play well. I think we had improper alignments there, and you can't give up big plays every time you look at this. Now, here they look like they're going to roll out and throw a pass. One of our guys goes to defend the pass. That was a quarterback sweep, Jim, all the way, and uh, we were b back playing pass there, and they did a good job logging us in. That gives our defense did a great job putting them to third and two. All right, that gave them a 7-3 lead. Then another big problem for you, your freshman punter shanks a punt, gives them great field position, but boy, defensively, this team rose up at this point. I thought on a couple occasions, Jim, our defense really came through when we put them in bad field position. I believe uh, there was a big sack there for a minus eight yards, and that really helped. Then you get it going on the ground, and Tim Biakabatuka gets it started. Boy, he ran hard. Yeah, I, I thought he had some great runs in there. He didn't play uh, as much as probably we'd like him to play. His leg got a little bit sore, but he should be okay. And then here Todd comes back and hits Amani Toomer. Todd hit uh, Amani Toomer again. Boy, Amani made some great catches. Talk about big plays. Third and 13 here. Right. I, I thought Todd did a good job staying in there with poison. Amani gets out here a little bit, makes a good run after he catches the ball. Then you get into uh, first and 10. Great play here by Collins and Hayes. Right. Mercury actually lost yardage on this reception when he initially caught it, and then he turned it into a three-yard gain. And how did Todd get out of the grass for that right. guy? He was sacked. Yeah, that was a good play between those two guys, and that's what upperclassmen, I guess, and seniors are supposed to do. But I thought Todd played very well. Still trailing at this point, so nothing. You get Bianca Batuga down inside, and then Wheatley takes it in, and you take the lead. Right, Connor Wright. I think Wheatley right there is running pretty hard. I think as the game went on, he got a lot stronger. And by spelling those two kids, I think that really helped. You had, just before half, got a big break here. A fumble, Morrison gets on it. He gets his second turnover of the day, but you can't convert again in close. Right, Jim, we had two of those, and both of them resulting in field goals. Now, I'm glad we got the field goals, but at the same time, you know, you'd like to put the six and seven points up there and really make a difference. It's a situation where, you know, if you get touchdowns out of those two turnovers, it's a lot easier game in the second half than it turned out to be. Exactly, and uh, it made it real easy. And 
you know, you got to come away with something. But we're not a good football team right there. We Our defense gets us field position. We don't punch it in. Yet we'll come back and take a drive 80 yards and make a touchdown out of it. So we would like to capitalize a little bit better on that. It got better in the second half as Michigan got better on offense and did a great job on the ground. But the first half was the defense, and the leader of that defense was Steve Morrison. We talked to him before we go to break. We work out real hard things and uh, make positives out of them. And we just wanted to come here and uh, start the Big Ten right, you know. And uh, we did, you know, we got a victory, and it's a tough place to play here. So we got the victory. That's what we wanted. Twin Trophy winners. Watch the Wolverines' greatest ever as you follow their careers and see their historic performances on their way to winning the Heisman Trophy. For your uh, ranked uh, office in the nation before you have to go in there, shut them down, get a lot of three and out on them, not let them get any big plays. I think they only got one to catch down there in the first quarter. Other than that, I mean, as far as big plays, we shut them down. Wolverines did shut down Iowa on Saturday. Great job against the team that was averaging 450 yards total offense. They didn't come close to that on Saturday. No, good offensive team. I think Iowa's defense played better. They played very hard today, but I, I thought we did a good job stopping them other than the one play Tony mentioned for the big pass. You're leading 13-7 at half. You know, you couldn't be happy because there's some things that went wrong and it was still a tight game. Right, you got to give them a little bit of credit, too. Here we punt them down until the ball goes out on the one-yard line. Here again is the example of what you said earlier, Jim, the defense coming, uh, rising to the occasion, Give giving you... us good field position. Yeah, great and finally, field we're going to capitalize on it. Here, Imani has a good run again after he catches the ball, taking us down in there. I think it's about 35-yard gain. Then Bianca Batuka, this was a physical, physical run here, Jim. I mean, this guy doesn't look that big, doesn't look that strong. Yet. Look at this. Right he just there. runs through people. Right, right. The headgear came off. You like there. that, don't you? Yes, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I thought at first that was the football going out there, and it was headgear coming off. So That gives you a 19-7 lead, and, and, and now things are a little more comfortable. And more importantly, here's right. Wheatley breaking one out of there. You're running the ball, creating some offense. Wheatley comes out, then Bianca Batuka. He's for 13. Bianca Batuka comes back for 19. We lose them a little bit in the camera here, but he has another strong run there we got down there installed again but we had a good drive taking over and uh, kicking a field goal here by Remy and this is a big field goal too. 22 some puts them down 15 and that's a that's a big three points right there oh yes there's no question about it all those they add up in a hurry obviously third quarter again and they come back and this is the first time they started to move the ball right Steve Morrison just just missed that football there, and they, Jasper makes a great catch. You come back, and Jared Irons just missed one right there, and Sletzker, their tight end, makes a reception for about 20 yards. Cedric Shaw for them, he's pretty good back. Third and four here, he gets outside, and uh, he's pretty good back. Yes, he is. You know what he has, Jim? He has a lot of speed, and he can turn the corner in a hurry. Then on fourth down, we're going to blitz him here, and just there's a great play by a quarterback and a great play by a tight end. Sometimes the other guys execute, right? Yes, as much as you hate to admit it, you're exactly right there. Clarence Thompson had good coverage on him, but he has to get his hands on that ball. Then we make a crucial error here. We signal for a fair catch on a kickoff and then didn't catch the ball. This is They a, took over. And that's a critical point because now Iowa, the crowd, everybody's into the game. You hold them, and Tony Henderson gets a hand on the field goal to block it. That's a huge turnaround of momentum, wasn't it? Big series. Particularly after your defense just got scored on, they had to go right back there and they held them. And then, as you said, they uh, blocked the... Uh, field goal that's a big one and they come back out and this is the drive that really puts it away this drive you had to love I think we look very physical here there's Tamunga for third or for 16 I think and then Wheatley back for 13 then Wheatley again for nine it seems like he's he's really on a roll here a little bit making better cuts and a little stronger runner this is a great throw and catch here in traffic the only pass of the drive right nine runs and one pass and right there Amani really got hit and hanging on that ball was a big, big play there. Then Tyrone takes it in for the touchdown. He cuts through and runs through a couple people. And when you talk about putting a game away, that's the way you do it. That's what you try to do against Colorado. You didn't jump off sides. You didn't have that kind of mistake. Exactly. And it, it feels good when you can run that football like that. Then they take it down there. Then they go, come up short on fourth down. Then we take it, I don't know, gain 50, 60 <laughs> yards running out the clock. But you ran out the clock, kept it on the ground. Our Norwegian Cruise Line play of the week, it's that catch by Amani. Big play, only pass of the drive, third and long. 
but it puts you in position. Right. The contact right there is the thing. I mean, when he hung on to that ball and got us a key first down to set up Wheatley's run, I thought that was a very big play. That's our Norwegian Cruise Line play of the week. Certainly there were a lot of candidates, but again, going back to the, the drive that finished it off, you pounded it out. The offensive line nicked up. Mike Sullivan not healthy. Uh, uh, John Runyon didn't play, and yet you opened holes. Wheatley and Bjek Patuka both ran hard. That's that's the old time Michigan right. football. You like that, Kevin? Oh, you always like that because you control the game. You're a dominant. You have a dominating feeling. And as you said, Reimersman went out in the game early. Sullivan went out for a while. Runyon didn't play, so again we're makeshift there. But. Jim, I can't believe the number of injuries that are starting to occur in college football. It's amazing. That game today had to be a very hard-hitting game. We are banged up and banged up bad. You know, banged up bad. A lot of these guys, you know, whether they're going to come back or not, you talk about Reimersman, you know, Sullivan. Gwines went out for a little bit. Uh, Runyon, you don't know about him. Defensively, uh, Glenn Steele, uh, don't know about what he's going to have. Is there exactly. a problem with injuries? Is, is the game too physical? Are, are the rules being... Well, what's, what's going on? I, I think sometimes what's happening in college football is too long. I think we should eliminate the stopping of the clock after a first down. Do it like we used to and like the pros do. Just as soon as the first down is made, stop the clock, put the ball in position, and then uh, let it let it, the clock start again. I'll give you an example. Iowa ran, had a 17-play drive, okay? And we stopped them. That one right there on fourth down. They only ran four minutes off the clock in 17 plays. And it gives you an idea how long these kids are out there. And then you get a lot of TV commercials that eat up the time and even How long the game. kids are out there, but how many snaps they have to play. Exactly. That's the other thing. They're in there for a whole bunch of snaps on situations right. like that. I think if you average it out, I think we, we would average maybe 10 or 15 more plays than the pros do a week or a Over game. Overall, we talk a little bit about the injuries and the difficulty in the game, things like that, but talk about the game and the importance of this victory. On the road, it's a Big Ten opener, but the importance of this win after the Colorado game, it, it finally puts Colorado maybe to rest for everybody. Well, hopefully, and uh, we're into the Big Ten now, and I, I think our, our focus will be there, but what a difficult schedule. What a tremendous league the Big Ten is this year, and that's where our concentration has to be. To win that at Iowa City, yes, but... Michigan State's a tougher team. Penn State's, a, you know, they're all going to get a little bit better, and uh, there's none bigger than next week. It never ends, does it? And the Wolverines have to take on the Spartans next week. But before we get to that, we're going to take a look at the Michigan experience. But before we get to that, let's hear from the hero on the ground at uh, Iowa. You got to be a fourth quarter player. I mean, Coach Muller always said you can't be great in the first and second quarter and then go down in the third and fourth. You got to be just as good as you were in the fourth. In, in the fourth, just as well as in the first. And I like to get better. It's always big in the state of Florida. 